department reports from the fire department and DPW. On tonight's action items, we have consideration and pops possible action to approve the tentative agreement with Sturbridge DPW Local 888 SEIU AFL CIO. Consideration and possible action on the appointment of Gina Marie Cajano to the Joshua Hyde Public Library Board of Trustees to fill the remainder of the term. Consideration and possible action on the appointment of Lily Dyer to the Joshua Hyde Public Library Board of Trustees to fill the remainder of the term. Consideration and possible action on approving the Trails Committee to design and build the Fisk Hill Trail parking lot and perimeter loop trail to Trek Loop standard and update on Riverwalk project. Consideration and possible action on the appointment of Noel Lamoth as backup electrical inspector. Consideration and possible action on surplus for various equipment. Consideration and possible action on surplus on equipment from the Department of Public Works. Consideration and possible action on signing the warrant for the 2022 state election. Consideration and possible action to sign the proclamation for the 100th anniversary of the Federated Church of Sturbridge and Fistdale. Old business, new business, correspondence, approval of minutes, and citizen form. Uh, so 615, we'd like to go into an executive session. All right, I'll read the motion. I'll make a motion to go into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, subparagraph 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Three, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. Are we also going into executive session for union personnel or all only non-union? It should, it should say union. Yeah, let me reread that because it, yeah. it's a typo, okay. Non-union <laughs> or in union, yeah, should, yeah. Okay, I, I'm just going no, to. No, actually you're fine. No, so it's, it's or contract negotiations. Bargaining. It's yeah. an alternative, it's, it's yeah. fine. That's, that, that's what it says, or to conduct collective bargaining yeah, sessions. that implies union. So the or union. contract negotiations, we repeated it again oh, with non union okay. personnel. Okay. That should read union personnel. Okay. Okay. Oh, but both times non-unions. we wrote yeah, non yeah, 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 personnel. Yeah. And it's not collective bargaining if it's non union. So um, I'll amend my motion to read collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with union personnel and to, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litig litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. So declare. Jamie, how do you vote? A yay. And have a second, you want a second? I'll it? second it, yep. And Jamie's a yay? Yes. I'm a yes. I'm a yes and I'm a yes, so. That's funny because that's always copied. for all the people in Ukraine, all the victims of COVID, and all the senseless shootings around the United States. Thank you. Public service announcements. Jamie, do you have anything to uh, None, thanks. Mary? No. And I have none. Town administrators, update. The only update I have is we are working with KP Law to address the legislative change on the um, host uh, facilities for marijuana. And so we have two in town. We currently have agreements with them. Uh, the legislation now involves having to quantify the impact fees, not as a percentage of salaries, but in a very concrete amount. That is very, very complicated uh, to be able to do. And so we're going to have to rethink how we do that. Um, and what we want to do going forward. But we're getting opinions now. If contracts that are currently in place um, hold until some date certain, or if they can retroactively, if the state expects us to retroactively go in and change things, um, or now have to go back and quantify the numbers we've used in a different way. So there seems to be a lot of ambiguity on the Commonwealth end of it. Uh, but in the meantime, we are working. I've spoken with one of the local people. I have to reach out to the other. Uh, but I just want to keep the board apprised that we may need to readdress our agreements. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do have one. I just thought of a Go announcement. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a couple of road races coming up in Sturbridge. Um, on November 12th, um, Saturday, November 12th, right after Veterans Day, 
There will be a Home of the Brave 5K. This is the fourth annual, and it's a, well, a 5K is a little more than three miles. You can walk it or run it, and the, it benefits veterans in Sturbridge or their families last year. We, as a town, raised about $6,000, and that's put on by the Special Events Committee and the Veterans um, Agent. And then the other 5K, and I don't have the details on this one, but it's going to be by the Rotary Club. Jamie would know more, and that's um, a Halloween 5K for family and friends, leaves out of OSV, um, and that's coming up in two weekends. Yeah, I think it's the 30th. Exactly. Today. Boss would want us to remember. <laughs> so two fun events. You can walk it. You can run them. There are signs all over town, particularly for the um, Halloween 5K, and there's games for the kids. It's a really great event. The Rotary Club put it on last year, and this will be their second year. We'll have more. Great. Yep. Cool. Thank you. All right. Next up, uh, fire department. Chief, you want to come up and say a couple words? How's everybody doing? Good. Ready Thank for, you. Ready for the change in the weather? Yes. It. Here it comes. Uh, so you have um, in front of you uh, monthly reports for June, July, August, and September. Um, some of the items of note, we had a very dry uh, season, as everybody's already aware of. Um, I count as very fortunate in the fact that uh, we did not have very many brush fires. We did not have very uh, many fires in general. So um, I think that's a, you know, a testament to our fire prevention and to the community being very well aware of uh, the conditions and doing their part to prevent anything from getting out of hand. So thank you for that. Um, we are back up to full swing as far as our training is concerned. Um, many of the members of the fire department are taking outside training in addition to what is required of them in-house. Um, fire prevention training, uh, chief officer training, uh, first line supervisor training, paramedic training. So. Our, our training that had been really stalled because of COVID for almost two years is back up and running uh, full steam now. Um, we recently received from the uh, state, uh, with the help of Senator uh, Fatman and Representative Smola, a uh, legislative earmark in the amount of $60,000 for the purchase of a new command vehicle. So the Deputy Chief and I will be uh, meeting with one of the vendors on Wednesday to see uh, what options we have available to uh, bring that uh, bring that vehicle back to, to town. Um, in addition to that, we've just recently applied for another fifteen thousand dollars from uh, the Department of Fire Services to help us with equipment. That money, um, presuming we we are awarded it, will go toward uh, to help us purchase more turnout gear um, for our firefighters. Um, and so those are two very positive uh, things that are on the forefront. Um, at, again, we always get recognized uh, by the community. There are a couple of thank yous in the, in the packets that you see. Um, those are usually received by my office. The people that are involved, the firefighters are involved, are made aware of it and given a copy of it so they can be uh, sure that they're appreciated, and I thought it would be appropriate that, that y'all are um, aware as well. Um, Call-wise, we're pretty much on track, uh, same uh, as we were last year, about the same number of calls. It does seem that uh, the nature of the calls that we're responding to are more serious. Uh, they're taking more time. They're requiring more resources. They're requiring more supplies on the ambulance side. Um, so the costs are going up, but um, you know, we've, we've uh, done a real good job of keeping up with the call volume uh, and, and the requirements that go along with that. Um, I can tell you that uh, to the end of September, we have asked for mutual aid more than we have given mutual aid. A lot of that has to do with our staffing um, and um, the fact that the area departments are staffed to their to their normal levels. Um, the other thing that's uh, of note <clears throat> from the fire prevention side, uh, there are all but about five uh, businesses that require liquor licenses 
that have not that have not been um, inspected. There are five left to inspect. Um, so the um, fire prevention lieutenant Jen Ash has done a phenomenal job creating a schedule for that, organizing that, and getting all of those inspections done, along with the help from the deputy chief and uh, some of the some of the on duty crews. But uh, she's done an amazing job getting that all organized and and put together so that. Um, all of the required licensing will be taken care of in plenty of time before the end of the year, in addition to all of the annual inspections that have to get done, like at the high schools and uh, the other businesses. So um, the fire department's really on a, a good track right now. So. How, I, if I may ask a question. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, so how, how are the new um, additions working out? <laughs> Your new staff members? Um, they're doing great. So the, the most recent hires are, uh, have all begun their paramedic training, um, with, the, with the exception of one, and, and his program is just a little bit behind the others. Um, in fact, there's, there's one in class tonight. They're doing fantastic. Um, one graduated recently from the uh, Fire Academy, and um, so he's just going through the in-house process of getting trained on our apparatus so that he can drive our apparatus. Um, we do have um, a recruitment going on for the two positions that were funded for January 1st. Um, my hope with that is uh, we will begin reviewing applications. The deputy and I will begin reviewing applications the first week in November uh, with the hope that um, a first round of interviews will happen the second week of November. Um, and the goal is to have two candidates in front of you for your December 19th meeting so that we can get them started for January, right at, right at the beginning of January. So uh, I think we're on track for that. Hey, thanks. Yeah. Chief, when we request aid, you know, I, said, I know you mentioned that we've asked more than we've been able to assist because of our staffing situation. What towns do we rely on primarily? Charlton, Southbridge, uh, Brimfield. Um, occasionally the um, Brookfield, but mostly because of the geography, it's, it's Charlton, Southbridge, or Brimfield that we're, that we're using. And I'm just curious, when you put out the request, do you put it out to one town or to all the towns and they respond if they can? Well, it really depends work? on where the call is. So for example, if there's a call at, at Walmart, we're gonna ask Charlton first. If they're unavailable, then we'll go to, Char we'll go to Southbridge or you know, we'll, there's a kind of a hierarchy. If it's, if it's on, that end of 131, we'll call Southbridge first if it's on 140. So it's a proximity thing, sure. not the size of their department necessarily. Right, because keep in mind, when we're, calling, when we're calling for mutual aid, there's already going to be a delay in, in a response. So we don't want the mutual aid company coming in to be any further away than absolutely necessary. Right. So. Anything else from the- It'll uh, be good to not be in that kind of position. And I have nothing tonight. Anyway, Fantastic. Yeah. See you in a couple of months. <laughs> Thank you. See you, Thank you. Yes. Chief. Have a good night. I have to echo the chief on the new inspector. Everything we're hearing from staff, she's a great team player. Um, I work with her on our site plan uh, meetings, the site reviews. She's very, very good. So we've, we're very lucky to have her in that role. Great. The business owner seem to be responding very well to her. She's very quick to get things done. She, she's a, she was an excellent, she's an excellent paramedic. She has great bedside manner and her customer service skills have just, you know, transferred over to the fire prevention side of it. She's a great representative for the town. And That's awesome. That's so important in that position yep. too yes. when you're in these businesses. So, Chris Conveyor, thanks, sir. Thank you. Thanks, hey, Chief. All right, next up, DPW, Heather, you want to come up? And Good evening. So you guys have three reports from me um, in front of you. You have my summary of what I've basically been working on, and then the two monthly reports from August and September. Um, so pretty much on our day-to-day -day activity monthly reports, the same things have been going on. We've been prepping for paving, continuing sweeping, um, continuing roadside mowing, which we're still continuing. Um, I sometimes feel like I could do it year-round, even in the snow. Um, but to, and 
replying, you know, answering phone calls regarding potholes, private roads, which also take up a lot of our time at different times with grading or filling in potholes, I should say. Uh, and answering questions a lot of times, because I know there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, but in my couple highlights from my summary of what I've been working on, um, I was able to attend the Talk of the Town at the Senior Center. That was actually really great to get a chance to meet some of the seniors and answer some of their questions. Um, we have uh, put out the call for winter um, snowplow contractors and temporary hires so that is available on the website anybody who might be interested in hearing this and would like to be a contractor for the town the requirements are on the website under dpw you can download the application right there or if you're interested in driving for the town in one of our trucks the application is you can find that application right there um, i did also get to visit some of the trail locations so i know we have that on the agenda last night i'm also familiar with the areas that they're looking to work in and have provided some input into those. Um, the landfill brush grinding project, which was funded in this year's budget, has been completed. All the brush that had been existing down there in a big pile has been ground up and removed from the site, so we're in good shape there. Um, work, the line striping on, on the town roads has occurred. I think you've all probably noticed that. Um, we're continuing on the 501 Main Street parking lot contract documents. Maple Street water line was delayed, which I told you that previously. It's kind of working out into our benefit because of the way the funding um, has kind of worked out. So we'll pick that up in the spring. Uh, safe route to school. We have a meeting. We had a meeting scheduled that got canceled because it was pouring that day. Imagine that, it never rained all summer. But um, we're meeting on the 25th to talk about that project with MassDOT some more. That's a MassDOT-led design project. It goes through their consultants, not ours, but we are critical to the process. So I'll be working with Burgess on that project and that design. And hopefully, it's not going to be short, come quick, but it is in the planning. So we should have a better access for people to walk down that road. And hopefully, we'll tie in very nicely with our complete streets project, which will follow also in the spring. So we should see better walkability in um, Cedar Street coming up in the future. What is the timeline? By next school year, do we think the sidewalk will be in place? Um, I, I will know more after the 25th, because okay. I really don't know what their timeline is. Okay. Um, I know we had to put, put on the approved tip, the transportation information, the plan. So I think that happened. So that's why we're actually getting the consultant. But it might be a good two years out. So nothing happens very that considering we're not leading that money. It's the state. It's it's going to be a little bit timely. Yeah. But I will. I'll give you an update after the meeting. They I they really curious. didn't. Yeah. They haven't given me a timeline. So, but I don't suspect that it's going to be quick <laughs> seems like it should be a little easier than it is but mm -hmm. and um, just water and sewer building bi billing um, has been a little bit delayed the meters have been read so we expect bills to go out by the end of October early November now so it's been a little learning process but we were successfully able to read the meters so that's the good news and now we just need to do the bill processing and get them printed and mailed. Oh, I want to jump in on this for a second. Heather has been willing with her department to take over the water sewer billing. Uh, in a lot of communities, it does generate from the DPW here. It has sort of been in finance and with some of the shifts going on and the time crunches, Heather has stepped up to take this over into DPW, work to find a consultant. And I think the biggest part of what she's doing is actually creating a procedure so that we don't run into the situation when people leave or aren't here, or have COVID, or have whatever, that everybody looks at each other and says, well, now what? Um, so part of taking it over isn't just doing it, but now actually establishing a written procedure and working with a company that's expert in doing this to get a protocol and procedure established. So I want to thank Heather and her department for taking this on. It's a big, it's a big chunk of work. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, and as some of you may be aware, depending on where you've been in town, we have started our FY to the FY23 paving operations. So um, Hillside and 
Riverview have gotten River no Ridgeview have gotten what we call their leveling course. They were very um, not co planiers so we, they were very bumpy in, in effect, um, and they really weren't very thick, so we didn't want to mill them out because we really wouldn't have had any asphalt to deal with. So we put a leveling course on, which was just an inch to an inch and a half to get the road more true, and now we'll come back and put our final course of pavement on. Then we will address people's concerns regarding their driveways and everything after that happens. So it's going to still be a couple of weeks, just where we are in the schedule for our contractor. But today they started the milling operations up on the trail, and the two little roads off the trail, so they're about halfway done there. They'll continue that on Wednesday. Um, we probably will do some patching up there because we know that the asphalt on the hill from Mount Dan to the first road there is very thin. We're taking it all out so that we can get a good layer in and so the people will see some paving hopefully this weekend on Saturday. Everybody beware. And also in the cemetery road will be paved on Saturday based on the schedule right now, which is Always, I will say, subject to change because of weather. Um, if they get delayed on other projects or something happens at the plant that we can't control, those dates may slide. But we're going to try to keep as people as up to date as possible. So, no rain for six months, and then six months worth yeah. of rain in three weeks. That's so, how it goes. You know, it's New yeah. <laughs> um, other things that I don't have on the report, but. Uh, I know I'm sure everybody's still very curious about what's going on with Route 20. I haven't heard anything more than anybody else has. It's been that they're in negotiations and they still haven't reached a big agreement. Um, I will, we keep calling and um, trying to encourage them to do something with that asphalt uh, and with the mm -hmm. painting of the crosswalks. I know that the last time they came out to do some painting, there was actually an accident down there. So, uh, I think that got kind of sidetracked because of the accident. Um, but we will keep on trying to push the state to push the contractor. And I know the contractors, everybody's kind of pushing and pulling multiple ways down there. Um, I hope for the town and the state's plowing sake, they do something with that road before it snows. And I hope for that business's sake uh, that it's right. That's the, that's the thing. That's I, I, that business, me. Yeah. I mean. Oh, I do too. I mean, I don't. I don't understand how those businesses right now have dealt with that for as yeah, long as they have. Outrageous. Yes. You know, I mean, it's such they a shame. Have, it's just awful. It's somebody's livelihood. I mean, I know it's not on the town, but I get a lot of people that mm -hmm. ask, and I'm. Yep. And it's I, not I, in our hands. Yeah, it really isn't in our hands. It's other a frustrating than, answer to have to give. Really. I know. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I mean, we can. We can continue i know robin has pressured the state and i i will continue to reach out to the people at my level but it it needs to go higher i just may need to fly my broom to boston that's all <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'll be there with her because it, it does it, it's it's getting to be very problematic and it just doesn't it's almost like they just don't mm -hmm. right yeah and it's embarrassing on the state and the contractors part both of them and we're suffering but. Mm -hmm. right um, and I don't think I have anything else, unless there's something I can, right. you guys can think of. Any questions from the board? No, oh, thanks, Heather. <laughs> Heather. Well, I, I just had to, um, first, plow drivers for this winter. Do you expect there's going to be a shortage, or you, do you feel so, confident you're going to fill them? I will say that we're actively marketing everybody that's ever plowed for us. I will give a lot of credit to... Um, my administrator and the operations manager, they've been kind of pounding the pavement, almost making phone calls to make sure people know that it's out there. So if people are getting phone calls or getting emails, here's our application. I have heard some feedback, even though I raised the rates a little, knowing that, um, anticipating that our rates were a little lower because of the price of gas and everything. I still have heard some pushback from some of the local contractors of what are you gonna do if gas prices go keep, continue to rise? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't have an answer for that. Um, so I'm hopeful. We have had a lot of interest and had some people that have plowed in the past coming back. Um, but it's until we actually get the applications all in our hands, I, I can't. We may have to adjust the rate mid-year depending on what mid-season, depending does. on what happens yeah. with fuel and what other towns do. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have to stay competitive. I mean, I know they contract in for the year, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I can tell you that this isn't, 
we're not we're not the only ones. There's definitely oh a yeah, it's everywhere. Everywhere, um, you know, the state's even pushing for more contractors to come in. So it's very difficult right now to find people, and you know, it's not it's not as profitable as it used to be. Right. Gas prices and the cost of equipment repairs and and the cost of just trucks in general and yeah. paying people. I yeah. mean, there's multiple lev levels that are all piling up there. So we'll do the best we can with whatever we have. Nice, nice. And the second thing was just because this year's kind of done, and and it's, I'm going to complain about the state again. Route 20, <laughs> they're not properly taking care of, like the median with the cobblestone. You got weeds growing out two feet. I'm a lot of residents talked to me about it, and I didn't know if you and Robin could reach out to them, kind of get a point of contact going for next year, and just see if there's anything more they can do because that's such our main artery that. Mm -hmm. That's frustrating to see. They have to do something about it. Yeah, if, and and I if we can, I would love to. Get, I know yeah, me and you have talked about. Yeah, maybe get permission to to just take care of it. Yeah, I would love to see that. Okay, we'll we'll huddle on it. See what the best what the best it, it option would, it is. It would put a, it would yeah. it is an eyesore, yeah. it, but it would put a pretty big drag on my staff of how much we could actually do and do other areas because we are out straight right now. Like I said, we are still roadside mowing. It, yeah. We still haven't roadside mowed all of our streets. So to say we're going to take on additional maintenance on the additional streets, we have to be very careful on that slippery slope with them because they, they already push back. You know, there's a dead animal on the road and they don't want to come out and pick it up. You know, it's, mm -hmm. we already get, end up taking those calls. You know, we end up having, which are emergent. Sometimes they're not even, you know, they're after hours calls. So we're paying our staff right. over time even to do it. So, I mean, yes, it, it, I hear the, I hear the, and I will, we will address it if that's what we're asked to do, but we also have to know where there's limitations on how much work our staff can get done. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just coming into this new with a brand new set of eyes, and I can tell you that I'm going to be making arguments that we don't even have enough staffing to do what we're required to do. Um, and I can kind of show that very quickly, but I won't, I'm not going to make that argument until it's budget season. So. We'll, we'll look, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. So <laughs> on that one later. Yeah, you really walked into that yeah, one. Yeah, walked into that. Sorry. Well, I mean, I'm hoping with the state garage right there, they do something. Just with a softball. You know, I, I agree. It needs to be addressed. Yeah. But I also think that it's the state's responsibility. Right. And I understand ultimately if they kick us again, we're going to have to do something. But this is the... the the responsibility of the Commonwealth, and yeah. you know, this is why people pay their state income taxes. And the squeaky and, wheel gets the grease. Yeah, so, so we'll squeak we away. Yeah, well, and keep I'll going just, up the chain. It'll, uh, we'll just will keep happen. going after them. So. But it needs to get done, and we will. Yep. We'll we'll huddle on that one too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up tonight, we're on to action items, and the first one is consideration and possible action to approve the tentative agreement with Sturbridge DPW Local 888. SEIU dash AFL dash CIO. So, um, in front of the board tonight is a tentative agreement for our DPW workers. Um, it uh, generally uh, has a, uh, as wage adjustment, 3%, 1.75%, and 2%, with an overtime, a snow overtime premium of 12% only for snow and ice budget related items. The uh, 23 is the 3%, but starting in 24 with a 1.75 wage adjustment is we will be establishing a new wage scale uh, because we are finding, to your point, our starting salaries are well below comparable towns where we require a CDL for drivers. And uh, right now we are actually, we have a position we have to fill. We're going to have another one coming up. And for recruitment purposes, we dropped the lower steps, added two steps. In the short term, there's a small impact on the town. In the long term, we actually will probably benefit because the added steps are 2% in between as opposed to the 4.5% steps that we had before. Um, we also will be doing 90-day, uh, we'll be extending probation, but there will be a 90-day evaluation required by the DPW director to ensure that if people are not doing well in that first in their first few months of hire, that they will know that in advance and have an evaluation and a chance to correct themselves. Those are the primary things, a couple other technical changes and some cleanup language. Uh, but generally, I think um, the precedent established, we always try to think about what the sort of general 
uh, wage adjustments are throughout the Commonwealth. And um, 2 to 2.5 is typically reasonable. So we have the three coming off the last sort of round, the 1.75 and the two, knowing that the 1.75 is a bit low because it's the wage adjustment, the scale adjustment year. So uh, I present that to the board this evening. Thank you, Robin. Any discussion from the board? Or? No, just really, it's, it seems like a good deal. We appreciate everybody's hard work in the DPW department. <laughs> I appreciate I, your help uh, getting it done, Robin. Thank you. I agree. I agree. Do we have a motion to accept? Uh, so moved. And a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? All right. Thank you. Next up, we have consideration and possible action on the appointment of Gina Marie Cajano to the Joshua Hyde Public Library Board of Trustees to fill the remainder of the term. Is anyone here? From Gina? I do not. Come right up. Right? So let me give you a little bit of a background on this. Uh, we had one vacant position, and as of the other day, I have a second resignation. Oh. Um, we had. Go ahead. You can oh, make sorry. yourself comfortable for a second. I'm a so, so I stand. Oh, you can stand too. I just didn't know if you were uncomfortable standing. I didn't want you to feel like you had to. Um, so we typically these are this is an elected board, and there's really nothing in our bylaws to talk about how to fill that. State law typically, I guess, implies that the select board then the board of selectmen then fills the position. We did post it for advertisement. Um, we had two applications. We had the one position, and then in the meantime, I have the second resignation. I had two very qualified people. The board supported the appointment of both. The board asked me to consider these two people for that appointment. Uh, it's technically, I believe, a selectman appointment in this case because it is filling. These positions will only be filled until the end of what would be the normal elected term, and then it will go back up on an election cycle. And of course, we would certainly, if all works out and you're happy, encourage you to uh, put your name in for the election. So with that, I present your first candidate, Gina Marie Kajan. Great. Um, so this is you, you live in town, and this is your first uh, run-in with Sturbridge as far as getting <laughs> yeah. involved. Oh, that's great. No, thank you. You got yes. a great resume. Thank so. you. I'm a teacher, so I um, my kids need books, so I'm in the library multiple times a week for myself and my husband's reading, and then whatever the students are involved in, get as much as I can. They're great. They're like, you know, we can extend your limit. We can get you what you need. They make sure it's it's fast, and my students are interested. Um, and I walked in one day, and they said, would you like to be a trustee? I said, I don't really know what that is, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yes. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Oh, you're like a dream candidate. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. And I love that you just moved. I feel like 2017 wasn't that long ago, and you're already getting invo really involved, which is nice. Yes, I, I think that's really important. Um, I went to school at Franklin Pierce University. I don't know if you know it. It's very small. It's really tiny under Monadnock. Um, and they have that community of just, it's so important, and be part of the community and be a team. Um, so I just, when we moved out to Sturbridge, my husband and I, I just felt that was so important. Thank you. Yeah, just thank you. I mean, it, it's hard to find people to do anything, and <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have a motion? Yes, I will move uh, to a point. Um, Gina Marie Cajano to the Joshua Hyde Public Library Board of Trustees to fill the remainder of uh, the relevant uh, uh, trustee term. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Congratulations. Good luck. Have Thank a great you. Night. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Next up, we have consideration and possible action on the appointment of Lily Dyer to the Joshua Hyde Public Library Board of Trustees to fill the remainder of the term. Is Lily here in the audience? I, I don't no? believe Lily is here. Um, but again, the same situation as before. And we had the other application. She actually is currently a librarian um, yeah. and has a, a degree in library, yeah. Yeah. library yeah. studies. Yeah. So um, we certainly have, we're very, very lucky to have two very qualified people. Yeah. So uh, with that, I would ask for the board to consider appointing um, Ms. Dyer. Okay. Do we have a motion? Uh, I will again move to appoint uh, Lily Dyer to the Joshua Hyde Public Library Board of Trustees to fill the remainder of the relevant term. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. All right. Next up, we have consideration and possible action on approving the Trails Committee to design and build the Fisk Hill, Fisk Hill Trail parking lot and perimeter loop trail to Trek Loop standard 
an update on Riverwalk Project. How you doing? Doing well, everybody. How are y'all doing? So I, Brandon. <laughs> so I was approached. I was approached by our our trails team um, to, for the support on starting the Fisk Hill project, and so we felt it should be presented to the board as we asked for your support for us to move forward with this as a town. And while we're here, we'll get an update on Riverlands. Riverlands as well, yeah. So I think uh, just as a reminder for the for the board in terms of the trail committee, you know, we you know aside from trying to you know connect town end to end. Uh, with different properties like the Riverlands. We're also trying to get trails into different neighborhoods with different uses. You know, so we have, you can bike a little bit, you can hike a little bit, you know, you know, horses in different parts of the town. And so that's sort of the, the big picture of what we're trying to drive. So um, with that, I think the Fisk Hill property, if, can you go into slide mode? Is it Paul? Yeah, it's it's up. Up. Okay. I put some. I know with the board you put animations in it, and it works a little better. So, the um, if you can go ahead to the next one. Okay. So if, if the board remembers, this is the Fiskill property that we purchased. Uh, you know, and it was actually three parcels. And as part of that, at town meeting, we presented you know a, a loop trail with a parking lot uh, on the property and some extensions into different neighborhoods from there. So if you go to the next slide, please. And that's what you're looking at right now. So um, we've scoped it out. Uh, we feel pretty confident that we can build this trail as you see it. Uh, there's a few wetland things that we'll work around like we do on all the properties in terms of dealing with the Conservation Commission. Almost everything there is logging road, so it's ag aggressively predisturbed right now, more so than t most of the other properties we see. Um, and, you know, it's going to be a pretty, and I think it's going to be a pretty straightforward project for us in terms of, you know, we've probably already done some looking and checking on a third of it that we know is going to be really easy for us to build because of the logging roads. So on the upper right, you can see the green trail. So that would be the entrance trail from the parking lot on Fisk Hill. And so, you know, our interest there is about a 40 by 100 parking lot uh, with a 20 foot driveway. And that's the spot where I think actually, Heather, you, you took a look at it as well. So Tom and Heather went out and, you know, it's the, it's the right spot on Fisk Hill because you can see in both directions. So it's, it's pretty safe. It's pretty flat. It's close enough to the road where we thin a few of the, the, the bushes out. The cops will be able to see the parking lot. So it's, it's a, an appropriate style parking lot that we consider a trailhead parking lot. Um, and it won't be very expensive to build. You know, we have some money already from the town last town meeting uh, to put down the stone dust and so on. And we have... Uh, you know, a company that's volunteered to take some of the trees down to do that. So we're, we're, we're poised and ready on that piece of it, and I think we're even poised and ready on the rest of it to go in and, and flag the rest and, and start to, 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 you know, to get really working on the trail itself. I think um, the other pieces on this, so on the left side, you'll see that we have two exits to Hall Road marked there. So OFS, you know, approached us, and, and we had some dialogue around uh, how to connect to Hall Road. And they're, you know, very open to it. It's one of the mantras that they have to be, you know, involved in the community uh, from corporate. And so they're eager and, and waiting. As you know, they said, as soon as you're ready, let us know, and, and then we'll we'll figure out how to go from there. So I think that's the big picture of the property. It uh, right now the, the conservation restriction is not in place on this property yet. So that's why we're coming to the board. You know, if it had a conservation restriction where it was either assigned to the board or the CONCOM, then we'd go to the, you know, the CONCOM if it was theirs. But before we assign that conservation restriction, I think we're looking to say, hey, can we start moving forward with this? Because you know, that paperwork may take some time. That's awesome. How long is that trail? I knew you were going to ask that because I saw you tonight. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think that's going to be, it's probably a mile and a quarter. Nice. You know, but I, but if you look at the Hall Road side, it's a, it's a, it's deep out to Hall Road. So you could actually do a figure eight that would, would get you close to almost a 5K. Wow. Mary's just going to do it. Yeah, she's going to do it a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I was that's looking. Right. I'm like, I like it. <laughs> so, I work. Everyone's got me figured out. Yeah, no, this looks, this looks, you know, it's, it's exciting. exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, and, Everything, you know, the other thing we'd probably, you know, we do initially was once we get 
settled. We put gates up to make sure it's safe and stuff like that. But everything beyond that, additional trails or other uses on the property is stuff that we'd come back for. You know, we're not ready to think beyond getting the initial loop and really feeling out the property, you know, and go from there. Is there one more slide on this one or is there? No, yeah, just all, just all the details of everything that we're looking to do. Yeah, so that's, that's, Great. that's Fisk Hill. So, you know, we, we're eager, but we're waiting in terms of uh, until we, we get the approval from the board before we We work. would need a motion on that tonight. I'll make it. Um, I will move that we approve the Trails Committee design and build of the Fisk Hill Trail parking lot as presented this evening and perimeter loop trail to track loop standards and well, update the river. Is that enough? Yeah. Because the rest is dealing with river yeah. walk. Yeah. I think the easement with OFS for Robin, too. So. What's that? To, to, to open up. You want oh, to and, oh, and to open up yes. discussions yes. to obtain an easement through yes. OFS's property. Right. Be perfect. And I'll second that. Great. Do we have any discussion? All in favor? Excellent. So I was on some of the trails on both Saturday and Sunday. This weather was amazing. And the parking lot was packed um, with some cars that are not Massachusetts as well. You know, you got people in from Connecticut. And I just think our trails look fantastic. It's, it's really starting to come together. Yeah. Um, it, we're finding that the more access we give on different parts of the property, uh, it, the, the, the parking lots fill up. Yeah. You know, it really is, uh, it's great. And so, before I jump into the Riverlands, because this is the Riverlands is the other one that the board is responsible for um, as care and custody of, you know, lead mine. Uh, we have a submittal to going into the state to ask for some more approvals on modifications we're making to some of the trails and a lot of NOI work we're doing to put bridges and culverts in for, for wetlands issues. Uh, Plimpton and Long Pond, we have some submittals to Opacum in terms of some trail proposals we're putting onto that property and wetland issues that we're trying to mitigate and so on. So a lot of good activity. So we're hoping, you know, with all of those properties that in the next three months we get through all the paperwork, uh, you know, through CONCOM and all these other boards to make sure that we can start the build cycle next summer. So it should be a very, it's going to be a busy two years with what we have ahead of us right now. Um, and so move on to the, and that has nothing, even the Grand Trunk stuff was very exciting as well. If you've seen that, you know, in terms of, Oh, I have a question. Well, I don't know if it's directed to trails. Why is it still closed on the Fopper Road side? He, he, we are waiting for him. Uh, he, and this week, it was either, I think it was this week he was going to finish up the remaining two or three things he had to do on the property. So there was, a, there was an open checklist that he hadn't finished of items. Okay, because it's some final stuff. It's largely done. And it's torture, honestly, because people keep asking about it. And, and you know, I've, we've, I've spoke with Robin on this. The across the street from that on Falker Road, you know, uh, Lynn uh, Peterson bought that property so that we can continue that pro that trail all the way behind Pa Plaza. So it's going to go all the way through the woods. You know, <laughs> it's Italian, uh, out behind Pa Plaza to Route 15. So it's going to be pretty, you know, another piece of trail that is good. So with that, this is the trail plan for Riverlands that the board approved previously uh, and if you click to the next page please we've built 60 to 70 percent of that and uh, if you look at the screen you'll see that the the red blue and orange that have hash marks in them those are all the flow trails so those are the downhill trails uh, that are meant for downhill riding or running where you have berms that you run into or ride into. So it's not, you don't pedal, you just coast and you're supposed to be able to go back. And so uh, we've had a group of about 10 to 15 mountain bikers that have been going out on the property and as they call it, caressing the berms to make them smoother and make them a little tighter so that you can ride and run. So we're, we're getting, it's, uh, the, the talk of this property is actually starting to pick up in the mountain biking community right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, so they're starting to, one of the guys said that uh, one of his buddies from Boston called him about it and said, I heard there's some trails that he has to ride. So it's, it's good stuff. And so on this property, um, the red trail that goes along the base of that is, is the Grand Trunk Trail. And that's the one that 
will connect all the way to the other end of the property when we get to it, uh, when we get the appropriate uh, land issues resolved and easements resolved. Uh, but in the next four things on this property, some that have been approved by the board and some that aren't, just to give you some awareness, if you wouldn't mind clicking the next slide. Uh, I'm going to start on the, the right side of the screen, you know, just to keep it easy. We're talking about a, a kid's track. There's a sand pit right next to the parking lot on the Riverlands, and it's, it's just right there. So we're talking about putting a little, a little practice area for kids to ride their bikes, you know, on these flow trails. So just something that, you know, a, a kid on a BMX can go in and ride around on is, is one thing that we're talking about doing. The second is that you can see the future bridge location, and I'll talk about that on the next slide for a minute, but we had a, you know, a great conversation with Robin. The WPI students have designed us a bridge, and it's, you know, the next step for us is to actually have a, a professional engineer review the design and approve the design to say this is a valid design for the situation that you're, where you're building it and so on. So, uh, we're doing some grant work right now to get funds to actually pay an engineer to validate that design. And so I think we're going to be submitting that uh, in, in a month. And I'll talk more about the bridge and what it connects and so on on the next slide. And then you can see that red line. That's the rest of the Grand Trunk. I just emphasized it. So that will go all the way out to Holland Road once it's ready. So the rail bed is there. Uh, this, like I said, there's some property issues that I'll talk on the next page that you know, we've talked to Robin about. But... You know, that's, um, that's the future. And then that circle with the additional flow trails, that is the piece that was approved already. Um, we're getting a little pushback, I think, to come forward from, from uh, the, the conservation holders with OPACM, but we haven't heard exactly what their concerns are. But that is the next phase of what, we're, you know, has been approved and we're going to build on the I'm property. Sorry, who's con what concerns? Okay, uh, well, Pacom has our... Acom, I didn't yeah, hear Yeah, they have that. the conservation restriction, yeah. and so I think they have a feeling that they'd like to see... Uh, fewer trails on our property, but I, I can't speak for them. So this is sort of what we see happening on this property, uh, and we're pretty excited about all of it because it's it 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 just continues the use and gives a lot of different um, different levels of use. You know, the the handicap accessibility on this property is really good, uh, and the, the river access on that blue trail up there is you're you know you're right down there, and all that stuff has been existing and, and is usable now. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, so this is the this gives you a bigger picture of, of downtown. Um, if you look at the three circles on the bottom of the screen, those are the, the circles where the trail uh, will contact the road or where the access points will be to roads from the trail system. So on the left side, you'll get off on Holland Road and then you can ride into downtown again. On the right side, you'll get off on that first the middle circle and then you, you can cross over by, um, you know, the steakhouse or the village entrance and go back down Main Street. And then, of course, you know, on the previous slide, I showed you where the bridge is. And this helps just with, you know, giving you some perspective of where that bridge would connect to downtown. So the red square is the land that we own. It's 469A that goes along the river. And then that blue square is 501. So that's the property we, you know, we purchased for the parking lot. And so that's where that, that bridge fits in terms of the downtown picture. So this is that connection that we talked about with 501 as much as it's, also, it's partially an economic development project for those restaurants and whatnot down there. It's the access to the trails as well. So yeah. somebody can come off that bridge for the public who's watching, come off that bridge and stop at a coffee shop or, you know, if they go biking, lock yeah. the bike up and go, you know. Check you can go left or shop. right. That's our real first commercial connection to all it, of our yes. trails. None of our yes. other trails really connect to a commercial into town. It's kind of a unique thing to have, uh, yeah. that level of commercial connected into yeah. uh, that kind of outdoor activity. Yeah, and, and, and as we get into, you know, trying to get, you know, picnic tables and places for people to come into the property and sit, and as, you know, as it, as it matures and you start to be able to do those things, I think we'll start to see a lot of use, especially in that section because it's, you know, you're sitting along the river, you know, so it's, it's a great way to, to, you know, to get out of the town as well from that side. So awesome. that and this is just this part of it is just an update in terms of the Riverlands. There's nothing we need right now. I think I think I will be, you know, Rob and I will be coming back in terms of what we hear back from Opacum. Yeah, it looks like we're going to set up a meeting yeah, soon. So <laughs> now I know we had a small area of contamination with Riverlands. We stayed away from that with our yeah, so trails. Actually, actually, if you click a space bar, I think there's another. So 
That yellow piece is the, where the Grand Trunk exists today, and that's the piece we don't own. That's the Belanger property um, that I think you've heard before, you know, from the previous TA. And that one, uh, you know, we're hoping to get that because once we do that, that's, you know, a big wide trail through the rest of the property. Um, the, the contamination is on the top, or the top side of that, so more towards the river. That, that's, that's where it is. So we've stayed away from that completely. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, we knew, you know. Right. After how long it took to, to get everything processed and sorted out of what was really there and what would needed to be done, we've, we're, we're not going down that area. So, right. any other questions or? No, oh, it's great news. I mean, it it's, I mean, this year between the T grant work, you know, and uh, Gene uh, was amazing in terms of helping Tom with the, the T grant paperwork, and that was an awful thing. And then the Riverlands flow trails, you know, that was grants that we had to use up as well. So we've, we've churned through a lot of good grant money this past year. So, so it's cleaning the books, which is a good thing. So other than that, um, any, any questions for the committee or things that you want to see us be doing that we're not? Where, where do we stand on a possible dog park? I was wondering if that was going to be asked. So, yeah, I don't want to put you on the spot tonight. Come back no, another night if you're able to talk. Well, no, that's the, the dog park. I mean, falls. I know recreation wanted to handle it. At this point, I, I would just assume, you know, maybe trails are on it. What's no, that? Recreation has done some feasibility studies on locations for it. 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 I, don't, I don't mean to be simplistic, but like, and I have a lot of people ask, like, what's the, it's, what's the big deal? I mean, in terms of designing and all that. It, it's location, it, design isn't so much the issue. Location is critical. Yeah. You can't have it really in neighborhoods, but it can't be too far away from neighborhoods. Uh, you need to have large enough for large dogs, small area for small dogs, ample yeah. parking. I get it, but you a lot to, of people, you, I get yeah. it, just a lot of people want one. It's, it's uh, yeah. you know, candidly, it's up there. Every time we look at a property, we're thinking about, you know, can you put a field on it and can you put something for dogs on it? Because that's what, what we need in town. And, you know, for the large dogs, you know, it's a large fenced-in area. area. For the small dogs, it's a separate small fenced-in area. And I think what we've been finding is, that, you know, there's a, the, the concern on the, on the trails now for people who not pick, aren't picking up after their dogs yeah. is becoming a growing issue. So that not that that... Has anything to do with with, with your question? But something. I mean, with, but with a dog park, well, you put the baggies out and containers. But you also typically will run plumbing because uh, they have water for the dogs. Yeah, Most dog water. parks have a water fountain for the dogs as well. So there are little things. That it, it's not. Is that a requirement by the state? No, I state don't know if it's required, but it's you would you would likely want to have that. I mean, I would not want to see a dog park where dogs are running in 90 degrees and there's no access. You you may have irresponsible owners who do not bring. Yeah. Water. Uh, yeah, but I mean, if they go on a hiking trail, they don't have it either. Yeah, but that's not necessarily um, geared toward dogs. Like from a legal standpoint, we're bringing dogs into an area. What should dog need? Dogs need. I, I would advocate for this, something like available water source. Um, but I, I, I think it sounds so simple to people. Just put a fence up and, and do a dog park. Oh, I, it's. I, it's it. I think the location though is the. the biggest issue because it is going to be barking you're not going to have you know you don't want neighbors right yeah. on top of it but you don't want it so far out that it's inconvenient this is for people typically who work who don't have time to walk their dogs they want to drive to a dog park and get the dog exercise so you can't have it too far out of the way it's i get it i just driving. know a lot of residents people ask it. me all the time yeah like, it, it would be you the, know the really we run into a challenge on the properties that we work on because of the conservation restrictions yeah. I mean, we're getting pushed back on kid flow trails, right? You know, because they don't want to see us over, and you know, we're going to, we're putting something in a sand pit. I mean, you know, so there's there's certain things that we have to uh, that we struggle with in terms of the properties we're on. I mean, if you're t you're talking about a place to put it, if I if if, if there were no issues, you know, the, the shepherd parcel is it's right on 15. It's easy access. You can pull it away from the you know the river and keep it out of that area. It's it got hammered by the tornado. You know, it's it's a, and we own it. So it's one of those things where, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, it's it's flat. You, can, you know, and so something like that is is I think where, and it's you're not going to bother any neighborhoods because it's noisy. You know, there's cars going by, so it's not going to affect anybody. It's a good idea. So, I think things like that, and then you could put build a trail around it. And there are liabilities. <laughs> there's insurance and liabilities we have. To oh, I get it. I'm yeah. just I'm just I'm trying totally to be a, I'm, I'm just totally trying to be a level. voice for residents. Absolutely. Because, you know. 
Because Ian's not here. That's his. That's uh, his. Well, no, when I, when, I, when, I re when I was re elected last year and I still went door to door, I, I can't tell you, like, seven out of ten people would ask me about yeah. that. And it, I said, you know, it, it is on our radar. People um, want them. A lot of people own pets. It's the same thing with it. We're getting a lot of questions around uh, picnic tables now and benches. And, 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 you know, and we're at a point right now where we're in such a, a mode of making the properties accessible. You know, picnic tables and benches and things like that are, you know, are, are phase two for us. But there's, there's a lot of requests and, and going out for that too. But yeah, the, the dog park is. Maybe we'll look into Shepherd. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Fran. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. for everything you nice do. Night. Great night. Well, thank you for all you do. It's that meeting with Oklahoma. Yeah, I was. Yeah, we'll talk. It's going to be. <laughs> we'll chat. All right. Next up, we have consideration and possible action on the appointment of Noel Lamoff as backup electrical inspector. So. Oh, great. Come oh, on up. up. So we have um, a rotating list of backup inspectors. So if Nelson needs somebody to come in to do an electrical uh, inspection, he calls. Uh, but our backup list, sometimes the people aren't available. I think we had two or three people on it. One person does some traveling. One person isn't always available for different reasons. So we are, um, we are looking to add, in this case, one more person on our rotation, and Mr. Lamont has uh, put forward his application to do this. Great. Do you uh, live locally? Or? I live in East Brookfield. I teach in Castro. Oh, perfect. Okay, great. No, thank you for your interest. In no, I'm the electrical instructor over there. Oh, good. Good. So. Great. All certifications are in order. Um, yep. Everything's fine. He's licensed and, and, and fully ready to start the first time Nelson gives him a call. Excellent. And Surprised he hasn't tapped on you before. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've talked to him numerous times. Okay. So. <laughs> Good. Good yeah. All right. Any uh, questions from the board? No, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm board. I, I have none. Uh, is there a motion? Yeah, I will move to a point. Uh, Noel Lamont has backup electrical inspector. Second. All right. Uh, uh, we got a motion. We got a second. Any discussion? All in favor? And we'll work with Nelson on getting you on the absolutely form formally on everything. So give awesome. Nelson a call tomorrow. We'll get you in that process. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank much. you for coming tonight. Have a great night. You too. <laughs> Next up, we have consideration and possible action on surplus for various equipment. So, I'm assuming we're just gonna. Yeah, this is surplus either for auction or disposal if it's yep. not fit for auction. And so every so often we try to do this and we try to collect enough because of the cost of doing the auction that it's worth it and it will, you know, make a little money if anything. But we also, municipalities are notoriously hoarders. Yeah. All of them. And see, and there's not one that's not. And when we can rid ourselves of some of that, we like to. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, I mean the more on Town Bond Road, that okay. could be, because I mean, it, it. I feel for the parents and the visitors who are trying to go to those um, fields, baseball fields and stuff. And it's been like that, you know, from the time our son was in Little League. This is long before you were the DPW director. No, so now I he's 25, and so if you yes. can try to clean up that road, that would Beyond be Beyond even cleaning that up, I think that just as we talk about the future of the, the whole DPW facility, I do think we need to work to somehow make that road more of a legitimate road, a legitimate access. It's not driving through the middle of the DPW parking lot in and around wrecked vehicles and frankly our current active school buses, which I don't think is healthy or safe. So that is, uh, you hit on one of those little pet peeves that from when I came here, I thought, it's been a pet peeve. This is a, a problem. Lot, yes, a it's a peeve, all right. You both like so. sugar and you're mad about the road. Yeah, we are mad about the road. We have a lot in common here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And we both get asked about dog parks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, do, do we need a motion to move this stuff? Uh, yes, okay. yes, you have to because you control that property. All right, great. Uh, I will move to approve uh, appropriate action on surplus equipment. Seam fit. Uh, do you want that? Yes. Uh, seam fit by Robin. Entry <laughs> <laughs> sees fit. And do we have a second? Second. That's what I want to say. We have a motion and a second. <laughs> okay. All, in <laughs> All right. Three to nothing. Beautiful. Consideration and possible action on surplus of equipment for Department of Public Works. Separate. Uh, yeah, that's separate only because, you know, Heather had so much stuff she had more to add. 
but it's all the same concept. Yeah, it's going to be, so you just need the same motion? Yep, same motion. Um, I move to approve uh, Department of Public Works action to get rid of surplus equipment via auction or disposal. Second. Is there a motion, a second, all in favor? Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, now we have consideration and possible action on signing the warrant for the 2022 state election. Pretty self-explanatory. That is what it is, yep. We you kind of have up. to do it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what would happen if a board did vote. <laughs> yeah. Do we have a motion on it? Sure. Amy, you're carrying the heavy lifting tonight. Uh, I know, Mary's killing us over there. <laughs> I make a motion that we um, move to sign a warrant for the 2022 state election. Do we have a second. <laughs> we have a motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. Well, Lynn's probably at home panic and say, what do you mean, what if we don't do it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Lynn's the one with the headache on that one. Okay. All right. Next up, consideration and possible action to sign the proclamation for the 100th anniversary of the Federated Church of Sturbridge and Fistdale. Pretty much straightforward. Pretty straightforward, aren't <laughs> you? Um, yeah. I'll read it. Presented to the Federated Church of Sturbridge and Fistdale, whereas the Federated Church of Sturbridge and Fistdale unites the worship and mission of the Congregational Church, the Baptist Church of Fistdale, and the Unitarian Church, and whereas this year marks the 100th anniversary of the Federated Church of Sturbridge and Fistdale, an important milestone for the church, and whereas the Fe Federated Church of Sturbridge and Fistdale promotes the unity of Christians, together they celebrate Christ's presence and God's grace, they respect one another in love, actively seeking and embracing those who wish to grow in faith, hope, and love. Now therefore, the Board of Selectmen of Sturbridge do hereby proclaim happy 100th anniversary to the Federated Church of Sturbridge and Fistdale, October 17, 2022. Very nice. Do we have a motion? Yeah, I move that we uh, sign the uh, proclamation uh, to the for the 100th anniversary of the Federated Church. Second. We have a motion, a second. All in favor? And I just want to add that they've been wonderful neighbors to the town of Sturbridge. Um, you know, we share the parking lot. They are they're good neighbors. I wish them all the best and good health and prayer. Wonderful. Good church. Yes. Yeah. All right, next up, old business. Jamie, do you have any old? No. Mary? No. Well, do we have a date for our, our um, I know I wasn't here last week, so maybe we... No, the like, retreat, no, because okay. nobody could get to anything yeah. until November, it seemed like. Okay. I, yeah. I prefer to wait till January, February. We gotta just we wait get, at get this Get through point. the holidays, we got Thanksgiving coming up, then Christmas. Yeah, we'll be pull, I'll be pulling the budget together at that point, so it might not be a bad time to be doing that type of thing to talk about. I'm amenable to, at this point, it's already October. It's, it's not like we did it. It's we're never gonna hit the decoration holidays. season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta get out there decorating, I gotta get dressed up for Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> busy time. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do it at the beginning I mean, of the year. I just think we get through the holidays. No, I agree. It, it I just didn't know if we had a date. Whatever you want. We'll, we'll do it. All right, great. Uh, new business, Jamie? None. Eric? No. I have no new. Correspondence. We we have a list of we do. We have two yeah. Yeah, conservation letter and uh, the Commonwealth oh. of Cable and Cable. Yeah. Oh, okay, but we don't have All right. Nothing you're taking action on okay. tonight. All right. Do I need to? Um, I th I have the letters. Okay. So we received um, correspondence from Rebecca. Our conservation agent is at this all, all correspondence dated October 12, 2022, regarding an update on Pine Lake RV Resort enforcement order. We also received a letter from Deputy Secretary Sean DeGreen, dated October 5th, regarding a license expiration notice. And that's it. You know, usually what we used to have, and no big deal, it's usually we just have like one sheet of paper that says correspondence and just what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. There are only two letters, but it just makes it easy. We can just okay. read it right down. Great. Next up, we have approval of minutes. 
for the September 19, 2022 meeting. And I have no corrections. Jamie, do you have any? None. Mary? Well, I feel obliged to look closely on Mary's behalf for any of <laughs> Somebody has to represent but her. I, I'm, I'm good. All right. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. I will second that. All in favor? Nice. Citizens Forum? <laughs> nice and quiet. And motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.